Welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we're not making soap. We're going to make a balm, a tallow balm to be specific, because I got this beautiful tub of non-GMO grass-fed beef tallow. I got this on Amazon. Uh, it is from Essential Depot, and if you have an Essential Depot membership, it might be a better price over there. I don't have a membership with them, so I just got it on Amazon because I have Prime and you know the drill. But um, I'll leave a link down below for this beautiful beef tallow. And uh, tallow is coming back. It's getting a resurgence because it has some really beautiful properties. Well, today's balm that we're making is very simple, super skin nourishing and luxurious. Now it does have, it's very buttery and it does have that feel to it. And I'm not gonna put any non-greasy additives in there. Um, I may do a non-greasy version at another time, but right now I just want to make a really basic, super moisturizing tallow balm just and let all the goodness shine. This balm also makes a wonderful diaper cream. It is that gentle. It's great. Um, so one of the special ingredients that I'm going to do in this beef tallow balm, because I am planning on using it on my face, uh, is I'm going to be using rosehip seed oil, and I got this on Amazon. Um, this has some beautiful, beautiful skin benefits, and we'll talk more about that later. Uh, and then the other oil that I'll be using, so it's mostly tallow with a little bit of liquid oils to kind of loosen it up a little so it's easy to apply. And um, I'm gonna be whipping mine. You can do it just as a solve where you don't whip it or you can whip it to make it fluffy. So I'll show you both in the video today. The full recipe will be written down below in the description box. And the description box, if you're on a mobile device, it's either the little upside down arrow or the show more. And that's where you'll find all the information, including links where I got the stuff and the recipe, all the good stuff is down there. Um, one of the other oils that I'm using today is my walnut oil. I got this one from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Walnut oil has some particularly beautiful qualities on aging skin, which at my age, you know, I'm looking for all the beautiful topical stuff that I can put on to help. You know, I want to age gracefully. So walnut oil is a wonderful anti-aging oil. You could use any liquid oil you want. Um, extra virgin olive oil is great, would make wonderful in here. So we'll talk more about your options later. But that is what we're doing. Now today I am going to put a little fragrant oil in here, but this would be perfect unscented or with essential oils. If you were making a baby's diaper cream, I would probably leave it unscented or just a touch of maybe lavender essential oil or something really gentle like that. Um, but today I'm going to be using Energy uh, from Be Scented because I love it. It's very citrusy. Let me read the scent description to you because it's just smells great to me. Um, it says an uplifting blend of citrus, including lemon, lime, grapefruit, a touch of cucumber, pineapple, blackberry, and champagne. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it just smells really bright and good. So, and this tallow will be for me and my family. So um, that's what I'm putting in it. So one of the things that tallow balm is great for is eczema or any super dry, patchy skin, super nutrient dense, and it's very healing on dry, dry skin. So the other thing, surprisingly enough, uh, tallow is good on acne or, you know, breakout prone skin. Um, it's antimicrobial and it's just great. You know, people with acne oftentimes have oily skin, but that sometimes they still need a moisturizer. Either they have combination like tease zone skin. I know I had that as uh, one younger person. I had the oily forehead, nose, chin. Um, but tallow is very good on problem skin. Now, if I was doing um, an acne prone skin moisturizer, I wouldn't do walnut oil. I would probably use jojoba oil, which isn't actually an oil, it's a wax, but it's a drier finish oil or grapeseed oil, a very light oil. That would work well with the tallow if that's your particular issue. Um, so just because you're having breakouts doesn't mean that you don't deserve a good moisturizer. And tallow balm can be a perfect moisturizer for that. So yes, tallow is antimicrobial and antibacterial, and it's high in, I have some notes down here, oleic acid, which is an omega-9, and uh, that helps the tallow or the balm that you create to penetrate into the skin. Our skin is very, the fatty layer of our skin is very similar to tallow, so it's readily absorbable into our skin. It's, it's just great. So here's some of the vitamins that tallow has, uh, A, D, K, E, and B12. 
it's high in those, so that's good for your skin. Um, the list goes on and on. It's anti-inflammatory. Um, I just think it's fabulous. And uh, when you get a grass-fed, sustainably sourced beef tallow, again, it's a sustainably sourced ingredient. So um, I think it's fabulous. So now what I need to do is get my entire work surface sanitized and clean and get everything out and prepped and ready to go. So we'll come back and make some really moisturizing, it's a simple recipe, but it's fabulous, tallow balm, both a whipped and a non-whipped version. All right, we are back and ready to go here. And so I'm gonna be working in a glass container here because I need to uh, melt this tallow down just a little. I tell you what though, it is soft enough where you could add all your ingredients in here and whip it and not melt it, but it might have a little bit of a grainy feel to that. So I really want this to be a smooth, fluffy whip. So all that being said, let me get my scale teared out with my glass container. Okay, we are ready to go. Here's the recipe. This is such a simple and wonderful homestead recipe. I'm gonna give it to you in uh, scoop measurements, ounces, and grams. So, a half a cup of tallow and an eighth of a cup of liquid oils. That's it. No preservatives, I love that. There is no water phase to this. You don't need a preservative in here at all. Um, so there's the homestead version. Half a cup, eighth of a cup, you're good to go. Here's what I'm doing. Four ounces or 114 grams of tallow and I already have that measured out. There we go. Two, one plus or 30 grams of liquid oils. One ounce is about 28 grams, so I need 30 grams. So it's just a, a touch over one ounce if you were doing this with ounce measurements. I'm gonna do grams today. And the way I'm gonna break this up is I am going to do 10 grams of my rosehip seed oil and 20 grams of my walnut oil. But first, I'm gonna pop this in a double boiler and just get this softened up a little bit more before I add my liquid oils in there and start the cool down and whipping. All right, I have this softened up. It's still got a little bit of firmness in there, but it's pretty liquidy. So now I'm gonna add my liquid oils. So for me today, I'm adding 10 grams of my rosehip seed oil, like I said, and it, you could just do a single oil. You could do olive oil. I mean, you can get so creative with this. Whatever oil that you like that would benefit whatever you're using it for, diaper cream, face oil, you know, so many options. So we're gonna go, this little uh, eyedropper is kind of slow. I'm just gonna pour straight in here. All right, I've got my 10 grams in there going to tear this out and now 20 grams of walnut oil for me. All right, that is it. That's it. If you're not going to scent this or add anything, you know, any other additive to this, it's good to go. You can let, we're going to blend this together really well. Obviously, I haven't blended it yet, but um, blend it up and, well, let me just show you what that looks like. Let's just say you're off the grid homesteader and you don't have a electricity or you just want to make a super simple tallow balm sauve type you're just going to blend this up and you can pour it straight into your containers once you have an emulsion meaning it's all blended together and it will you know firm up to a nice kind of dense sauve consistency right there but what i want to do is i'm going to whip it today because i like light and fluffy so we're going to whip this all right, and lest I forget, this is cool enough, I'm going to add my fragrance in here. So I'm adding at 1% fragrance. Actually, I'm gonna go a little shy of that. 1% of this would be 1.5 grams. I'm just gonna add one gram of fragrance. I don't like things to be over-scented. I don't wanna wear it like a perfume. I just like a little gentle fragrance in my you know, balms and lotions and things. So here we go, we're gonna do one gram of fragrance. All right, let's get the scale out of the way here. And now I'm going to use my blenders here, even though I don't, you know, this is my old standard KitchenAid. It's oldie but a goodie. Um, and I'm just gonna get this blended and emulsed together really well to a thin trace, and then uh, we'll let it cool and come back and whip it when it's completely cooled. All right, just for comparison sakes, I have this little tiny two ounce jar here that I got on Amazon. I love these with a the little bamboo lid and it's got a little um, sanitizing seal 
lid on it that it comes with. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here and then after we whip it, we can compare the two, a solved like finish and a whipped finish. All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side to cool off completely. All right, so I have popped this in the freezer for, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and it's firming up nice. I'm gonna give it a whip and see if it's chilled all the way through, and I might need to pop it back in the freezer because I really wanna whip this up light and fluffy. But you can see on this one how beautiful and smooth the top is. We'll give these both a try after I get done whipping. I just wanted to show you I think this is gorgeous in the solve form, but now let's get to whipping this one. And yeah, I can tell that it's still loose enough. It's liquefying as soon as I'm whipping it. So um, I'll whip it for a little bit and pop it back in the freezer and we'll check in later. All right, it's been about another 15 minutes. Let's give it a go. Oh yeah, it's looking much firmer now. And so now it's just a matter of whipping this to the consistency you want. I want to incorporate a lot of air and so I'm just going to keep whipping this for a while till it looks really light and fluffy. All right, I think this looks just about perfect. Totally thick and fluffy. It's almost like whipped cream. I love it. So now I'm going to throw this in a piping bag so I can get it down in my bottle without making too much of a mess. All right, so today I'm going to be using this four ounce jar. I got this on Amazon. There's a link in my Amazon store for these. Um, and for my piping bag, I'm just going to recycle this Ziploc bag that I have for super simple. I'll show you how to do this. So I like to hold a little end in my hand like that and then flip the rest over my hand. So there it is. I'm going to fill that up with my beautiful fluff here. <laughs> it's so nice. And I really like the very light scent on this. It, it's, um, it covers up any tallow scent, but it's not perfumey. And I really like that. So, oops, I really do recommend um, fragrancing at a light load for these kind of lotions and things. I think the lighter you go, the better or leave it unscented if you like that. All right, so we've got it all up in here in the bag. Oops, I made a little bit of a mess. Let me get that. And then we're just gonna turn it inside out here and clip off a corner. Super low tech, but it gets the job done. And you push it down to your corner here and you pipe away. And it just gets it in the jar without making a gloopy mess. all jarred up. I have my labels printed. We'll talk about those in a minute. But first, let me give this a test. Uh, let me see. I have some leftover fluff in here, but let me start with the balm here and see if you can pick up the texture. It's pretty smooth and easy to melt, so it's not hard. In fact, look how quickly it goes to liquid here on my fingers. And this is not a warm room, but so it looks real shiny. But watch, I'm going to rub this in. It is very moisturizing, y'all. I didn't put any arrowroot powder in here or anything to stop this very emollient feel. Um, so it is going to have that kind of a finish. But boy, oh boy, it soaks right in. It feels very soothing. So that is the solve consistency. Pretty easy to get in there. It's not stiff at all because the liquid oil really lightens it up. Now, let's give this whip a try. <laughs> this is so fluffy. And again, it's just light, 
it feels just buttery smooth and goes on really nice. So this is deeply, deeply moisturizing with the walnut oil and the rosehip seed oil. I am going to be using this on my face, almost like slugging, if you've heard of that. If you don't know what that is, <laughs> look it up. Uh, you use Vaseline, which I am not a huge fan of. Vaseline is a petroleum product, um, so not a huge fan of putting that on my face. This, though, I will definitely put on like after I do my retinol treatment just to seal everything in. Super moisturizing. If you had dry, chapped hands, elbows, heels, I think this would be your friend. Diaper cream, if baby has a really raw bottom from you know diaper rash, this would be very healing and, and moisturizing on that. So, and again, tweak the oils, the liquid oils to your preference. Uh, put essential oils in there. If you wanna do it for baby, I would do a little lavender in there maybe, make it extra soothing. So good, and you can play around with this recipe so many different ways. So now, let me go get my labels and show you what I, how I'm going to label these. All right, time to get the lids on and the labels on. So let's do that first. The little, uh, I don't know what these are called. I know they have a name, but I really like them. It's like a little sanitary barrier there. It helps keep everything sealed in. Put the lid on. There we go. I will say this about this product. It has a very low melting point. I would not ship this in the summer and we are coming into warmer months. This, and because it's so deeply moisturizing too, this would be a fantastic winter um, product, but I would not ship this in the summertime, just FYI. <laughs> okay, so let's get on to labels. For this jar, I have these labels here. They are one and a half by five inches, and I use Maestro Label Designer. These are from onlinelabels.com. I use these all the time in my lotion videos. This is the label. Um, I referenced it multiple times. So same label, uh, print it out. What you wanna do is uh, any pertinent information. I have my website on there. I have what this is. This is a whipped tallow balm the scent of it, what some special ingredients in there, how much it weighs, and then over here is the ingredients, and you wanna list your ingredients in descending order. So for this, it's the beef tallow is number one, then the walnut oil, then the rosehip seed oil. So you wanna go from greatest to least when you're listing your ingredients. So there's that label. And again, I have all the same information, only instead of a whipped tallow balm, it's just a plain tallow balm. On this little two inch round, again, these are from onlinelabels.com, and it will fit on the top of this two inch round top. I hate to cover up that bamboo, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna put the sticker on there for you all. <laughs> so let's get to it. Actually, I'll do that right now. Let me get this completely centered up. You could put this on the bottom, you could put it on the top. So there it is. Okay, I got this on. We're gonna label this one and then I'll show you the shrink bands that I will use for the different size jars. So there's one. All right, and you guys know my pro tip to keep your jars from rolling away on you. My spatulas hold it steady. We're back to shrink band, and I actually don't have a really good size for this small two ounce jar here, um, but for the four ounce jar, these 115 by 55 bags, or not bags, shrink bands, these fit perfectly on this size, and these also fit on an eight ounce size like that. So let's do this one, and uh, I'll show you how it goes. These are really nice because they have a perforated edge so they unzip off the container after you've sealed it really nicely. I think they're very user friendly. I like to hold it where it's flat on the top here and then go around with my heat gun till it's shrinked on there really good. is all sealed up and I tell you what the shrink band actually protects the label on these because these are not waterproof I use craft labels um, I, I would recommend waterproof labels if you have that kind of a system to print them but I don't but this protects the labels really really nicely so I do love to shrink band these and that way I know when somebody gets a product it's brand new brand spanking new I love that so yeah the smaller shrink bands that I have for the two inch jars the two ounce jars like this are just a hair 
skinnier than this jar and so they didn't fit on here. So this is not shrink banded, but you know what? This is mine anyway, so we're gonna be okay with that. <laughs> So there it is. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and give this recipe a try. Let me know what kind of tweaks and uh, oils you chose in yours or fragrance or essential oils. I'd love to hear how you formulated this for yourself. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me and have a really wonderful day.